In this lesson, we're going to go over the what if analysis. Introduction to the what if analysis. It would be a big mistake for anyone to chalk Excel up to a fancy calculator that simply creates fancy spreadsheets and performs calculations. It's much more than just that. It can also perform what if analysis. A what if analysis lets you explore possibilities by entering possible values into the same equation so you can see the possible outcomes in the cells of your spreadsheet. There are all types of what if analysis that Excel can do. However, in this course, we're going to cover three data tables. This lets you see how changing one or two values will affect the bottom line. Goal seeking. This lets you discover what it takes to reach a certain objective. And scenarios. This lets you set up and test different cases, such as best case scenario. Data tables. Excel 2013 will support two types of data tables, a one variable data table and a two variable data table. The one variable data table substitutes a series of possible values for a single value in a formula. A two variable table substitutes a series of possible values for two values in one formula. Okay, if you're lost as to what we mean at this point, don't worry. Let's walk through it step by step. We're going to do a what if analysis with a one variable data table. So let's do a small spreadsheet that shows the sales forecast of a convenience store. Let's do sales 2013. And we're going to say that this was 550. And then we have 2014 growth, which hasn't happened yet. And we're going to say 1.5%. And then we're going to say what the projected sales will be. In this particular case, we're going to say that this is uh, D3 here plus uh, D3 again times whatever this percentage is, which is D4. And that gives us 558. 25. So in this uh, formula, uh, what we can do is we can uh, make some defined names here. Hopefully you, re you remember that we did this before under formulas. We're going to go to define names here and select define names. And we're going to say that this defined name is sales 2013. And we're going to say that this is a defined name of growth 2014. We'll just call this growth 2014. And then here we're going to say that this is the projected sales, which is that. So what we're really saying in this equation here, uh, in layman's terms, is uh, we're saying that the sales of 2013 is actually sales of 2013 times the growth rate that we're expecting for 2014. And that's essentially the formula that we have uh, that we're doing right here, is we're taking the sales of 2013 and then we're trying to predict based on a 1.5% growth rate in 2014, what our projected sales would be for 2014. All right, now we're gonna come here to, and enter, we're gonna enter some possible percentages for growth rates, potential growth rates for 2014. Okay, now we're gonna copy this formula, which is, uh, calculating this and we're going to copy that formula right here into E7. And then we're going to just say that. Great. Hit enter. Next, select the range from here to here. Okay, so we've copied this formula from uh, D here over to here. 
and uh, we've called it projected sales. And what we want to do is we want to use the what if analysis on these uh, hypothetical uh, growth rates here, which we created in this column D, 1%, 2%, and 5%. And the way we do that is we're going to highlight this entire selection and be certain that you also highlight the copied formula right here. That's important or else you're going to get an error message. So we've highlighted all of this stuff. And now we're going to go to the What If Data Analysis tool, which is located under the Data Ribbon tab here under the Data Tools group. So we click on that. We're selecting a data table, and we're only doing one variable here. And that actually is uh, the variable that's found uh, under here, the 2014 growth rate. Now. The way you determine the difference between whether you're using row input cells or column input cells is quite simply this. Where have you aligned your hypothetical numbers? Here we have aligned our hypothetical numbers, 1%, 2%, and 5% in a column. So we will use the column input cells uh, as our selection. If it was across the rows, we would use the row input cell. So we're going to click here into the column input cell because we've aligned our hypothetical numbers here in a column and we are then going to click on what we're looking what we're looking to uh, hypothetically change which is this percentage here the 2014 projected growth rate so we click there and uh, notice it's using absolute values and we click OK and this will now bring us a scenario of what would happen with different growth rates and uh, currently we said 2014 growth at 1.5% would yield us a projected sales of 558.25. Here, you can ignore these two numbers here because it's just calculating a 0% growth rate, which would just be the same as uh, 2013. Or we could do a, a smaller percentage here. We could do like, oh no, they didn't grow 1%. They grew 0.5% uh, in that possible scenario. But here, we, if we grow at 1%, we would make $555.50. A 2% growth rate would yield 561, and a 5% growth rate would yield a 577. So this what-if analysis tool with one variable data table gave us a few scenarios to look at for different types of growth rates for 2014. Okay, let's go over goal-seeking. And let's uh, just remove this stuff for now. Use Gold Seek when you already have an outcome in mind, such as a target sales amount. Gold Seek will allow you to figure out the numbers you need to hit to reach that goal. To use Gold Seek, you click on the What If Analysis button and select Gold Seek from the drop down menu. You'll need to select the cell that contains the formula with the result you want. This is called the Set Cell. Next, you'll indicate the target value that you want the formula to return in addition to the location of the input value that can be changed to reach this target. Let's demonstrate this. So let's create a new worksheet here. Blank worksheet's fine. Great. Now, let's go and follow the example here. Let's call this quarter one, and then we've got uh, sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit, expenses, and income. We want to figure out what our net income is, which is pretty much sales minus cost of goods sold and expenses. Now, we have $100 worth of sales, and then we have cost of goods sold to be, to be $10. Uh, and then we have expenses to be uh, $30. Gross profit is determined by sales minus cost of goods sold, and income would be determined by sales minus cost of goods sold minus expenses. So this gross profit here is actually a formula, which would be, starting with the equal sign, sales here, and we're gonna add, because cost of goods sold will be entered as a negative number, B3. So that equals 90. Now, the income here will be another formula, which is uh, sales 
uh, plus uh, cost of goods sold, which would be a negative number, plus expenses, which is another negative number. Okay, so here we have an income of $60. And now, using this table above, we want to figure out how much sales will have to increase to reach a first quarter income of $100. And we're going to start out by selecting cell B7, which is right here. And it contains the formula of B2 plus B3 plus B5. Now we go to the data tab and we click on the what if analysis button and then we select goal seek. So let's do that. So our set cell is B7 and we want to put for the two value what we are looking, our goal for uh, the income. So let's make that to be a hundred dollars. Now, how do we want to achieve this goal? We're going to select what cell needs to change in order to change this goal. And for that would be B2 because we want to alter our sales to uh, change this goal. So we're going to do an absolute value of B2. And we click on OK. And then it tells us goal seeking with cell B7 found a solution. So if your target is 100 and the current value is $100, and we click on OK, our sales would need to be 140 in order to achieve our income, our target income of 100. This helps us see what numbers, in a very simplistic fashion, this helps us see what numbers would need to change in order for us to reach our goal. All right, now let's go over scenarios. The scenario manager allows you to create and save different input values that create different results. These are called scenarios. To set up a scenario, the first thing you have to do is identify the various cells whose values can vary in these scenarios. Next, you select these cells, then click on the data tab and go to the one if analysis tool and select scenario manager. So let's go do that. Let's go to the data tab, which we're here, and go to what if analysis and go to scenario manager. And it says no scenarios defined. Choose add to add a scenario. So let's click add here. And it wants a scenario name. So we'll do uh, my, we'll do my new scenario. And then we say, wh what are we going to be changing? And uh, we could say, uh, B3 through B9. Then it asks us to enter values for each of these. And we could be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And it'll show you what will happen. Now that's great, but how does that work in a real life example? So let's go over here and let's create another uh, scenario here and let's uh, we have quarter one here so we want to create a scenario and we want to show a scenario for different types of outcomes uh, for sales and cost of goods sold what is important to note is that most likely when you do your scenarios you do not want to include formulas in your scenario cell selection so uh, gross profit here is a formula that is being derived from sales and cost of goods sold. And the income here is a formula that is being derived from sales, cost of goods sold, and expenses. So we're going to create a scenario here using different types of numbers. And we're going to do it, but we're going to make sure that we select non-formulated cells. So uh, it's easier if I select them right now. So this is a constant number. Cost of goods sold is a constant number and expense is a constant number. I haven't uh, selected any formulas. So now I'm going to go to the data tab and then I'm going to go to the what if analysis and I'm going to select scenario manager and I'm going to select add and it's going to, it's found the three cells I selected, which is B2, B3 and B5. And this is going to be called 
different quarter one outcomes. We select OK, and then it's asking us, OK, how do you want to change these scenarios? And this is certainly a good scenario, which is the default scenario, so we can add that. We can also do quarter one positive results, and then we'll select OK there, and then that we could do, oh, 200 for sales, but yeah, this would have to increase in cost of goods sold, and cost of goods sold would have to, uh, sorry, that should be a negative 20, and this should be a negative 60. Now it asks us, uh, what do we want to do? Do we want to show that? Let's show that. So that would be a scenario called quarter one positive results. I'm showing it right now. And then if I go to different quarter one outcomes here and I show that, it goes back to the original. And we could even add another uh, scenario. How about we add um, great sales, poor expenses, and it's like, okay, 400 in sales, maybe 40 in cost of goods sold. And then for expenses, let's say that that's like 300. So we could say great sales, poor expenses, and that's going to look like that. Uh, positive results here could look like that. We see a change. And so it's a wonderful tool to use, particularly when you're trying to think of all the what if scenarios for possible outcomes, particularly in the performance of your business.